Hey everyone, thank you for watching. Today's video, it's that time. It is that time to tell you about the worst makeup that I tried in 2021. My dog has already come right next to me. If you just saw her tail in the viewfinder, she's like, mom, I know you're gonna need my support to get through this video. If you wanna hear about, I've narrowed it down to 10, the 10 worst products that I tried in 2021. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, welcome to today's video. Let me hop into my outfit of the day, which is a is a YouTuber. It's a YouTuber outfit because I have on my sweatpants and my slippers, and then this nice top. And this nice top. I'm just trying to fool you guys into thinking that I have a full nice outfit on, but I'm definitely still wearing my sweatpants. I'm also wearing a sports bra. It is what it is, y'all. Uh, I will link all of my makeup down below. I'm wearing a couple of the, well, I'm wearing the two new shadows from Auric in their holiday collection. And if you missed yesterday's video, which is a new Will I Buy It, I'm actually giving away both of the new shadows from Auric in there. I am doing my 12 days of giveaways for Santa Sam. Today's giveaway is going to be on Instagram. I believe I'm planning to do a live chat today. It's going to be a PR haul and a live chat, and there's going to be a giveaway in there. That will be uh, on my Instagram, which is March Beauty Word, so make sure to check that out. Hopefully, all goes as planned, and that's actually what I'm doing today, but today's Tuesday. It's like, you never know what's going to happen. Christmas is in, what, two days when this video goes up? I'm not prepared. I'm not ready for it, but I will link all of my makeup down below. And I, I uh, moved my chair over so I could add in some photos because I don't think I have the majority of these products anymore because uh, they're bad. They're bad. I don't, I, I don't know what else to say. And you know what was funny? One of the first things that I saw on my list, because just throughout the year, I keep a running list. And whenever I do, you know, my makeup monthly videos or like, worst of videos and things like that, I will add it to the list so then at the end of the year I can come back and look over everything. And I'm looking over what I had put in uh, January's Makeup Monthly. And I was like, the Benefit Their Real Magnetic Mascara? I was like, that came out three years ago. I might have tried this mascara at the end of 2020, but I checked my worst of video from 2020 and I didn't have it featured in there, so I was like, you're going in 2021's video then. This mascara, I remember the first time that I wore it. <laughs> I, you know, did my makeup, put my mascara on last, uh, changed, got ready to film a video, filmed, I believe it was a Will I Buy It video. And, you know, sometimes the Will I Buy It's take me longer to film, so it's a pretty long time that I sit down and I'm chatting. I get done with the video, take photos, and I'm usually kind of far when I take photos for like thumbnails or makeup photos. I'm usually kind of far from the camera. I don't have like a little screen next to me so I can see up close. And I'm taking photos and I'm like, okay, you know, things are good. I remember walking into my next office because I was still living at the house in Iowa where I had the offices next to each other. Walk into the other office and I glance in the mirror. I have mascara all over my face. And I was like, what happened here? I was so embarrassed and you can see kind of like halfway through, like getting towards the end of the Will I Buy It, you can visibly watch the mascara transfer onto my face. And I had that moment where I was like, do I refilm the end of the Will I Buy It video? And I was like, no, this is a great product review for this mascara. You visibly watch it transfer onto my face with me just sitting down doing nothing. Like, so that to me, I did not like that mascara at all. And I was very surprised because I do like some of Benefit's mascaras. The, um, the roller, what am I trying to say? The roller ball mascara? The roller, roller lash mascara? The roller ball? Who? The roller lash mascara, even the Bad Gal Bang. Like I like that mascara too. Uh, so I was really surprised that the magnetic lash one did not work out for me. I felt like I saw some other people give it really positive reviews, but if I have a mascara that's instantly going all over my face without even doing anything, without even sweating, without even power walking through my house, I was like, no, that product's not gonna work for me. <laughs> I was so sad that I did not love this next product. I was so sad because I was very excited about it. I got it in PR, which I was so grateful for. I did a video maybe like halfway throughout this year talking about products I was so glad I didn't spend my own money on. One of the benefits of this job is that, you know, you sometimes can get PR from brands, which is great because I definitely can't afford to buy everything. Um, so when you do get PR, it's really nice to be able to try out products and review them without constantly spending thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars every single year uh, on makeup, which I have definitely done. So when I got in the silk powder from Tatcha, 
I was so excited about this. I just had a feeling, right? Like I just had a feeling that we were gonna become new best friends. That did not happen. I quite genuinely hated this powder and I like Tatcha. I like a lot of their skincare. I repurchase a lot of their skincare. Their silk canvas primer, not the, the, the putty one, um, but the, the liquid silk. I so enjoyed that primer. I used it all the way up. It was in my last empties video. So there's a lot that I like from Tatcha. And like I said, I just had this feeling I was going to love this product and I truly, truly hated it. I used it on my under eyes. It made my under eyes just look so much worse. You know, I'm 34. I don't have the smoothest of, of under eyes by any means, but most powders do a pretty decent job for me. Uh, Charlotte Tilbury, um, even the Kosas one, number seven, um, like loose setting powders, Lawless, Pat McGrath, Milk Makeup. I mean, there's a lot of powders that look, look well on my under eyes. This just immediately made me look older, I felt like. And then I tried it on my face too. I tried it as a setting powder for my face and it just instantly made everything so much drier. It emphasized things I did not want to be emphasized. It went into my lines. I was like, what in the world? And I believe I tried this first on camera and I had people telling me, you really need to use like the smallest amount of powder. And I just could not find that balance between using the smallest amount of powder to where I could actually see a difference and then just instantly using too much powder and then it was just overboard and it was like a dry cakey mess on my skin. I was so bummed about this. I thought for sure I was going to love that and it's in the worst of video. It's in the worst of video. The next product is one that I feel like a lot of people really enjoy and I still see people recommend it to me to this day and I'm like, why did... I wish that I loved this one. I have a handful of mascaras in this video, which is kind of funny to me, but this is the Bite Beauty Upswing Mascara. I like testing out mascaras. There was a time where I only wore false lashes. I used to, in my YouTube videos, you would always see me with thick black liner and big old false lashes. That's what I enjoyed. Nowadays, I don't do as much liner. I do pretty scaled back eyeshadow looks. I normally just rock my natural lashes. That's just kind of my vibe. You know, who knows, next year and a year or two, I might go back to the big liner and the big lashes. IDK, this is just where I'm at right now and that's fine but I get a lot of people that recommend the bite mascara to me because they know that I like to try out mascaras and I'm like y'all I tried that one when it first came out once again this got sent to me in PR and I was so bummed because once again I like Bite Beauty I like a lot of their products I like testing mascaras when I got that one I was like yes please first of all I didn't think it really did anything for my lashes I didn't notice much and now I have N lashes to not write home about y'all like I, I really don't they're pretty short they're not very dark there's not a lot of mascaras that I have found that I'm like I'm going to keep repurchasing you 2021 was really the year of me finding those mascaras and I talk about them so often on my channel I'm wearing the lawless beauty the Maybelline sky high the rare beauty I've repurchased like four or five of those uh, so those I really love, but the Bite Beauty, I just didn't feel like my lashes had any sort of oomph when I wore it. And then I also found that it transferred on me pretty quickly. And that's one thing that I really look for in a mascara. I just don't want my makeup moving. I don't want my makeup transferring onto my face. Um, I just, I do not like that, especially when it comes to mascara and to start to have the raccoon eyes. I'm just not a fan of that. So I don't know. I feel like so many people love this mascara and it just did nothing for me. A couple of complexion products that really did not work out. One of them was from Derma Blend, and this was their CC cream. Uh, I had also received this in PR, and I was excited. I'd never tried Derma Blend, but it sounded like an interesting product. It sounded um, pretty medium to full coverage, especially for a CC cream. And I remember when I was trying it, you know, I was definitely dealing with hormonal acne, a lot of redness, a lot of scarring on my skin. So I thought if I can have something with good coverage, uh, I believe that it did have the SPF in it, uh, but it was still going to be lightweight on my skin. I I was really down to try it. I was very into the skin tint trend that we saw. I bought so many skin tints and more lighter coverage foundations, tinted SPFs even. Uh, I did make a move in 2021 from Iowa to Las Vegas, so the climate was very, very different. My lifestyle became very different. I was outside a lot, I was by a pool a lot. You know, I was definitely wearing lighter coverage with a lot of SPF. So I was very interested in these products, but the one from Derma Blend, I did not like at all. I thought it was very thick. Uh, you know, it definitely gave a lot of coverage, but it was one of those products that just looked like you were wearing a lot of makeup. Very thick, very cakey, very obvious that you, that you were wearing a lot of makeup. I didn't think it blended out nicely under the skin or like 
settled nicely onto the skin. It just kind of looked very mask-like. And I was very bummed about that. I only wore it a handful of times so that I could review it. And then I was like, peace. Another skin tint, this is one that I purchased myself when I was in my skin tint craze. There was one video that I did, I believe um, towards maybe like the early summer, late spring, where I went to Ulta because I wanted to grab one or two skin tints and I ended up leaving with four, I believe it was. I was just, I was going through a phase, okay? I was, I was going through a little thing at that time. But one of the skin tints that I purchased was from Florence by Mills, I believe is the name of the brand. And... I was so disappointed in this skin tint. This was the first product that I had ever tried from Florence by Mills. And it had made me not want to try anything else from the brand. It was so interesting though because when I was at Ulta and I was reading the box and I was reading the claims, it talked about how hydrating it was and all this, you know, dry skin and I just moved to the desert and I loved hydrating products and I was like, this is gonna be great. This was one of the driest products that I had ever put on and I was comparing a lot of different skin tints at this point and there was other skin tints that didn't make those claims to be hydrating, yet they were more hydrating than the one from Florence by Mills and I was like, what in the world is going on here? It did not, once again, this did not look good on my skin at all. My skin has definitely kind of been a little bit of a roller coaster throughout this year. I started out the year um, definitely a lot more oily, very acne prone, a lot of hormonal acne. Um, I moved, I changed um, my skincare up, I got on a prescription skincare, and then I definitely started to get a little bit drier. I'm more now on the combo side, I would say. Still can deal with some dryness, but there are a few areas, especially the T-zone, that do get a little bit more oily. So that's kind of where I'm at now. But especially then, I feel like I was starting to get more into that dry category. And I just... This did not look good on my skin at all. Once again, just didn't blend in well, didn't didn't do anything flattering to me. I describe this as maybe it might be good for someone who has really good skin. And I think the brand is kind of targeted towards a younger audience, which, you know, perhaps it's not me. I'm young at heart, okay? But perhaps I'm not the the main demographic, which is fine. That's okay, because there's definitely other brands that are geared more towards me. Um, but that definitely made me be like, you know what? I uh, think I'll not really being in a rush to try that brand again, but that skin tint was probably my least, between the Derma Blend and, and the Florence by Mills, those were definitely my least favorite skin tints that I tried, which is why they made it into this video. Let's keep going. Another affordable product that I was really bummed about was from e.l.f. Cosmetics, and this was their Putty Bronzer. I was really excited to try this because I definitely started to get more into cream and liquid products, um, kind of more into 2020, but especially 2021, I was buying a ton of cream and liquid products, bronzers, blushes, highlighters. So when e.l.f. came out with their putty bronzers, I was all about it and I just did not find these to be a good product. I felt like they were really hard to blend onto the face. I felt like it was one of those that no matter what I did, no matter how I applied it, whenever I try to blend it out on my skin, I would pick up foundation or any other products that I already had on. I started to use it at, like in the reverse of foundation and technique where I would put it on first and then do my foundation because I was like this is the only way I can use this product and even still I just didn't think it blended well I didn't think it looked very natural it just kind of sat on the face and was like here's splashes of bronzer that I tried to put on I was so bummed about that because once again I really thought I was gonna love it some eyeshadow palettes that I didn't love I will say I'm getting ready for ranking all of my eyeshadow palettes that I tried in 2021 I am starting to have eyeshadow palettes all around my apartment because I'm like stacking and like putting one over here and one over there and it's 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 quite hysterical, but that video should be coming in the next couple of days here, so stay tuned for that. So I'll have a lot more eyeshadow palettes to talk about in that video. But I tried the Love Struck palettes from ColourPop. Once again, this was a very, very early release. I think it was the first release that ColourPop did in 2021, and I was so excited about it. I mentioned these videos in my new makeup releases tag that I did in collaboration with Angelica here. I mentioned this one in products that I felt, uh, what was it, were like disappointing or they didn't live up to the hype is what I think was the one that I answered that one to. Because I felt like when these were coming out, everyone was so excited, I was so excited. Uh, ColourPop is a brand that I often get PR from, but I was like, if I don't get this in PR, I'm buying them right away. I did get them in PR. I like stopped everything. I was taking photos and videos. I did looks with every single palette. I remember I was filming for hours doing looks with every single one of those palettes. And as I was doing it, I was like, 
Man, I am not loving these as much as I thought I was. It just, the color pop can sometimes be hit or miss with their palettes. Sometimes they're phenomenal, like knocked out of the park, and other times they're pretty subpar. And these just really did not become a favorite of mine, which I was so, so bummed about. I really wanted to love them. I don't really love the pressed glitters, and I don't love the matte shadows with the microfine glitters. And the Love Shock palettes had at least one, if not two or three shades in those, in all the different ones. And they've released more throughout the year, and they're just, they're they're not my favorite from those little five pin collections, which I'm bummed about because, of course, people started immediately comparing them to the Natasha Denona minis, and maybe they would be dupes. Definitely not. I would rather, me personally, I would rather spend more money and get the quality of the Natasha Denona that I'm actually going to use more versus the ones from ColourPop who just sat on my shelf. All right, we are almost finished. So there's actually another foundation that I really did not enjoy this year. And I'm super bummed about it because I love this brand, but no brand is ever going to have products that I love across the board. But Lawless, uh, Lawless Beauty came out with their Conceal the Deal foundation. And wowzers, I did not like this one. I tried it fairly recently and I tried it in a Get Ready With Me video on YouTube. And sometimes it's so funny because I'll be doing a video like that where I'm testing new makeup and something's not working out, like that foundation was not working out. And I'm reading the comments and so many people are like, take it off, take it off. And I'm like, y'all, I'm trying to review the product for you. <laughs> like, what do you mean take it off? Like, I have to try it. <laughs> I have to, you know, see this through. I have to see how it goes. And sometimes that means wearing a product all day and going out in public with a product all day just to simply see how it wears so I can come back and review, honestly. It's torture sometimes. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's it's not that traumatic, of course. But, you know, sometimes it is funny that you, we do have to try bad makeup. And sometimes we have to come on camera, especially if we have a lot of busy filming days or we upload frequently. Sometimes we have to come on camera with bad makeup. Sometimes we got in public with bad makeup on. It just is what it is. Um, but that way we can make these videos and tell you what doesn't seem to be worth uh, spending the money on. Now, once again, my skin has changed quite a bit. When I tried the Lawless Beauty, I was definitely kind of more where I am now, which is pretty combo, but I still felt like this one was very dry. It did not blend well, and you can see that in the video. <laughs> it was not blending well onto my skin. It was one of those that throughout the day, like even by the time I got done filming the video, I was like, wait, maybe the foundation doesn't look so bad. But I noticed it was one of those where I would have to use very specific products with it in order for it to look good. The Dior Powder No Powder, I feel like that can save anything for me. And that really saved that foundation in that video. But if I didn't use that powder with the foundation, it looked terrible on me. It aged me. Like I said, it was very drying. It didn't look like it blended in well. Once again, kind of just more, it was very obvious I was wearing makeup. I have seen some people, especially with oily skin, say that they really do like this foundation. So maybe if you lean more like straight oily, this might be a good option for you, but if you're more combo or more dry, I would definitely stay away from it. Another mascara, one more mascara, final mascara that I'm going to be talking about today is an affordable one, and this is from Essence, and this is the Good Stuff Mascara. I believe I mentioned this in last month's Makeup Monthly, uh, but this was one that... I just don't get Essence mascaras. I know so many people love them, the false lash and all of the things. I just cannot get into Essence mascaras and I wish I could. They came out with this Good Stuff mascara and sent it to me in PR and I was like, I'm gonna give it a shot. This mascara does like nothing to my lashes, like nothing happens when I wear it. It's so strange to me. They barely get darker, they barely get longer, they don't get more volumized. It's just, it's almost like I just kind of combed my, my lashes. That's it. So I wore this a handful of times just to like try and see if anything would happen and nothing did. And I was like, okay, I don't know, man. I just can't get down with Essence mascaras. They just do not work out for me. And then the last product, the 10th product that I wanted to mention is from Neutrogena and this is their Radiant Setting Spray. Whew. Okay, like I said, I'm a little bit more dry now. And when I saw a Radiant Spray, I got this in PR. I was like, oh, you know, I might like that one. This was one that just drenches your face, even with just a few sprays. It like drenches your face, leaves the droplets on your skin, and to me, just like straight up rinse your makeup look. And obviously, it's usually the last step that you take. And to me, all the times that I tried it, it it would just ruin my makeup looks. And I was like, no, no, no. And I'm like fanning my face and I'm trying to take my sponge and like blend it in. I'm like, oh no, oh no, no, no. So I do like setting sprays. I like finishing sprays. I use them a lot. 
but the one from Neutrogena I most definitely cannot recommend because I ruined a makeup look or two <laughs> with that one. Uh, other than that though, those are the 10 worst products that I tried in 2021. I would love to know, do you disagree with me on any of them? Did I mention any of your favorite products? Because I feel like I might have in here and I'm so sorry about that, but it's just makeup and we can agree to disagree. In my opinion though, these products were not worth it and ones that I am not using it again. So I'd love to hear your thoughts, of course. We have the best of 2021 coming up. We have palette rankings coming up. Stay tuned, we got a lot coming on. I'm still going through with Vlogmas, so I'm posting a video every single day in December. I hope that you are having a happy holiday week. If you enjoyed this one though, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. I hope you also consider subscribing before you go, and I'll see you in my next video.